So I'm going to try something new. Um, I've kind of wanted to make some YouTube videos and whatnot and kind of add some different effects into them and whatnot. And uh, this year is part two of, of working with 21st century skills and the competencies and whatnot. And uh, my class was approved for uh, as a class model, which stands for contextualized learning activities for student success. So I'm going to kind of do some videos based off of what we've been doing in class. Um, in the description, I'll put like my email or whatnot. If you want to ask some questions or anything like that, it'd be neat to kind of collaborate and, and work on some stuff there. But um, this past week, my students just, well, it, it was amazing to kind of see what they were able to do. And to be quite honest, they're kind of the inspiration right now to to make this video. Just, you know, they were trying some new stuff. They were putting themselves out there. So, you know, lead by example. So here I am. Um, but yeah, it it was a heck of a couple weeks uh, in 7C at uh, Southview Public School. So a bit of a brief history of kind of what got me interested in like the 21st century competencies. Uh, last year I was at Storrington uh, Public School in a grade six, seven class. And, you know, the afternoons were a bit of a struggle for us. You know, the kids weren't really enthusiastic about it. I wasn't really enthusiastic about it. You know, we were all kind of tired and we just felt like we could, we should be spending our time doing something and like engaging with the curriculum in a different way. So I went to my principal, Mr. Mooney, and shared this idea that I had of having a 21st century block. And it was amazing. Um, as soon as we started going on to it, I mean, the afternoons became like almost our favorite part of the day. And it really drove our learning in all other areas, not just in what we were doing in that particular moment. Um, so, you know, this year, Southview Public School, I, I wanted to take a look at the same thing. My class at Sofiu uh, 7C is one of the classes that um, are using a model developed by Jason Quimble and Jeff Pesnick called the Class Model, uh, which stands for Contextualized Learning uh, Activities for Student Success. So this class model that was designed uh, was intended to bring some awareness to uh, SHSMs uh, in high schools. So an SSHM, SHSM is a specialist high schools major that focuses on an economic sector. And during this uh, in high school, you have a customized learning program based off of your interest. Um, you're gonna have work experience, you're gonna have um, through your co-op, you're gonna have certifications that you'll get that are related to your field. Uh, you might even be leaving high school with a uh, phase one of your apprenticeship, you know, complete. So, you know, these are going to open up so many more doors and opportunities for students if uh, if they're in them, you know, whether it's in a trade or whether, you know, they want to go towards like a university type route. These are all going to be, you know, highly beneficial for students to go into. So, you know, raising awareness and letting them know what SHSMs are available out there, you know, this is huge. So this is what the class model is, is intended to do, is to get students just kind of thinking about these things uh, ahead of time. All right, so now what's got me really excited. Uh, the past couple of weeks, my students and I have been working on a Valentine's Day store uh, to kind of bring in that economic sector of business. So our idea was is to take some of the funding that we got from the class model, uh, invest a bit of that into ourselves uh, to run this store and start our foray into, into business. And with our goal of being that our profit would actually fund our first uh, woodshop project by itself. So the first thing was, you know, getting approval from the students. So they have been approved for this money. Um, you know, they're in control of it. So, you know, I said, hey, here's my idea, Valentine's Day store. Um, we need to get some merchandise. Do I have your permission to go out and get, you know, $50 worth of merchandise from Dollarama? Uh, and, you know, unanimous vote, got to go. So, you know, come back, come back on the Monday and show the kids what I got, you know, they're all pretty excited, like, hey, we're going to actually do this. So the next part was, you know, kind of looking into the unit rates um, of those products. So during our math component, we were breaking down, um, you know, the cost per unit. Uh, we were also exploring the importance of units uh, prior, but then it was like, hey, real life uh, cost per unit. So, you know, the nice thing about Dollarama is it's got the price right up in the top right corner. Haven't gotten into working in tax just yet. Um, so, you know, $1.25 and then we have, you know, 12 suckers or 12 pencils, whatever it might be. And we find it the cost per unit. So for those two items, you each around about 10 cents. And we talk about the importance of rounding and whatnot in a real world context. 
So from here, we use Pure Deck to um, and small groups to collaborate on like what should the prices be, and that was a really interesting conversation. You know, sometimes you you do think pair share or like group things, and you know half the class is doing it, the others aren't. Um, it was like you know groups were kind of debating themselves, like no, it should be more, it should be less, and all these reasons. So each group would come up with their own idea. We had about five price uh, groups. Uh, then we would have a bit of a debate. You know, why should it be 50 cents as opposed to 75 cents? Um, you know, some put, folks went, well, let's double the price, so 40 cents. And we would talk about, well, what's going to be easier for people to bring in and easier for the cashiers? Is it going to be 50 cents, two quarters, or four dimes, and then having to make change, or whatever it might be? So one of the neat ones was, for example, those suckers and the pencils, is that, you know, a sucker, it's a one-time deal, but a pencil you can use a little bit longer before it runs out. So for the ones that had um, on the package how many there were, those ones are great. And then we got into a little bit more intricate ones uh, that, for example, the chocolates, that we had to take a look at the nutritional facts to find out um, the uh, grams uh, per the pieces. So we had to use those ratios to find out how many grams were in a specific piece of chocolate and then take a look at how many grams were in the total bag. And then that was a bit our estimate of how much chocolate was in there. Um, you know, we had some interesting conversations. It's like, you know, it's not exactly a full piece. Is that the weight of the material that's inside? Is it just kind of like an average? So that was really, you know, interesting and, and useful conversation to have with the students. Um, we did the same thing with our cinnamon hearts and whatnot. Uh, and it was great. We had some great mathematical conversations here about units and the importance of them. Uh, and again, building those prices that were fair, uh, thinking about your audience, all those type of things, you know, connecting all the way in. You know, and that was just the math component of it. Uh, you know, in the literacy block, we had several committees working on different things. We had a commercial that was published to YouTube. We had a business proposal that went to our administration of the school. You know, Miss Borges, Mr. Down had been awesome on, you know, supporting us and whatnot. And they were great. The kids were um, nervous about making their signatures there. That was really comical watching them do their first signatures. Um, but yeah, it was great. So we had these proposals, we had advertisements, we had morning announcements, um, we had uh, leaders who were helping, you know, kind of manage certain groups to build some leadership uh, things themselves. Uh, and then, you know, once we got our business proposal, we got all these other things done, it was time to start the business. And yeah, our first day, whew, we were deer in the headlights there for a little bit, but it was it was fascinating. Within you know the first five or so customers, you got to see like you know people kind of calming down, like you, you know in a sporting event, that first couple minutes of uh, someone's debut, like they're really nervous, they're really excited, and then they just realize they get into a nice rhythm. Uh, there was one point during the store that we had uh, it seemed like a million people in the classroom at the time, um, but you know my class they handled it with poise. It was great. Uh, they had built up that confidence there. You know it was great to see like the customer service component too, and then every time we had like a bit of a lull with uh, with classes coming in, um, they were right there like trying to count up. You know what are we at now? What are we at now? And uh, it was really neat to kind of see that that energy that was within the room. Uh, you know. Students, you know, also uh, getting like the layout of the store. All the, there's so much going on. I had a tweet about this uh, earlier on. All the stuff that we kind of went through, um, but yeah, it was great. And then as we were going through the store, uh, our second day, um, we ran out of stuff, uh, and you know, we were expecting to have more sales the second day with people being aware of more of the store. Um, so I went out planning, got some stuff for. Uh, for us to have some more things, um, you know, it's comical watching some people try to get Valentine's Day stuff for their significant other. That was that was a comical part of my day, but um, yeah, brought back. You know, we had to adjust a couple prices because we couldn't get the exact same items, um, and then yeah, we sold out again. You know, and you know, even though we had sold out uh, that second time, it was it was amazing because you know we still had that energy, and this was now, you know. 200 minutes on the second day uh, of working on this shop and and the kids were still like into it. And I think the, the big thing about the reason why they were still into it was that we had worked on like the, the shelves and the pricing that they knew where the money was going. 
Uh, they knew where the money was going. They knew what it was, you know, intended for. They were, they, you know, hell bent on trying to make sure that they got to uh, their their goal. And yeah, there was tons of motivation going on in the room. You know, the week before that, uh, before all this even began, we took a look at the shelf and, you know, how much was it going to cost for each kid to be able to build a shelf and, you know, what materials we have to be, you know, going under Rona to, to find out. Um, yeah, it, it was amazing. So it was two weeks or almost three weeks of like joint learning in a, in a large project that was broken up into into to bite sized components for grade sevens. And like they just conquered it. It, it was amazing to truly see. You know, when it was all said and done, you know, the, the kids were so excited. Um, you know, they we took a look at how much we, you know, actually put in after we had to go back to the store and get some new things for that, you know, that's that sellout. And, uh, you know, we we were amazed. Um, the kids were beyond excited to see in that pride that, you know, that they had accomplished something true. So we had spent less than a hundred dollars on our merchandise, but, you know, from a revenue perspective, you know, we finished the day with $474. So not, you know, we got to have that conversation about revenue and profit, you know, the difference, you know, taking into the expenses and, and whatnot. So, you know, their original uh, investment in them was was two hundred and fifty dollars, and in one business, uh, they've already got to three hundred and seventy five dollars almost in in money that now is theirs, uh, that they they were able to increase from a mere hundred dollars, you know, and they got that hundred dollars back. So, you know, from their component, uh, you know, they're super excited about starting Wood Shop. Uh, that'll be coming up. But as we get the passport to safety going for that, we've, you know, we've got the accounting component. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at nonprofits and exploring what nonprofits are, uh, taking a look at the, um, you know, what makes a, a nonprofit better than, a, than another nonprofit, even for the same cause. So our hope here is that we're going to be taking a, a component of this money, uh, kind of like a tax or a responsibility to the public um, and giving back uh to, to our community and, and, and hopefully seeing that uh, take place uh, in the world around us. So, you know, it's going to be an exciting time with all these things going on. Uh, I know that my students are, are, are highly engaged and that's the best part. So last year I was at Storrington and, and I got the opportunity to work with Steve Raby. Uh, I worked with him in a previous LTO. Uh, but it was absolutely amazing to get to work with him in a, in a close environment again uh you know he, he brought a wealth of knowledge uh not only about my blueprint but kind of you know in that role that he was in last year of of working with the 21st century competencies and and really enforcing that within intermediate students uh it was my kids absolutely loved having steve in the room um so this year uh taking kind of that momentum i got i'm working this year with uh, Tracy Bridgen and Matt Gallup, and they've been working on this type of stuff with their students as well in grade eight. And I actually get to have planning with them this year, which is really neat. So um, we have been bouncing ideas back a, back and forth and sharing some knowledge. And they're, they've been amazing mentors. So uh, kind of before I go into all this, I just wanted to give some credit there. Uh, and also be mentioned uh, Jason Quinville and Jeff Pesnick as well. And uh, But yeah, I just wanted to give some credit to some folks who've been incredibly supportive there. All right, so if you're still watching this video, uh, perhaps you're a student or something like that. Um, if you're in my room, you probably know that I don't really like doing this kind of stuff. I kind of feel a bit awkward. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge social media person. So, um, but, you know, I do find like making videos unique. And this is the first time I've kind of tried it. So, you know, it was not perfect. I'm sure that there's, you can see a lot of things you could, that I can improve. Feel free to comment some improvements I can make if you're watching this. Um, but I know myself, like, I'm probably not going to wear a t-shirt and sit on my couch. So um, those were some things. But one of the things that, you know, it they make it look really easy on YouTube. But, man, so I've been working on this for four hours. And, like, I know I've got a lot of room to improve. But, you know, you got to kind of get over that whole I have to get it right in one take. Like, I've got a bunch of videos here that are, you know, five minutes long but i'm only using 30 seconds of them so 
it's another thing that, and again, any of my students, you guys will realize uh, I like to talk. So I thought this was going to be five minutes. And by the time I put in the stuff I'm about to, it's probably going to be closer to 15. So for me, that will probably be my next goals to kind of like be a little bit more concise and um, start, stop doing um, this. Um, 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 yeah, I know I repeat some of my words quite a bit. So, uh, you know, I've got some room for improvement, but, you know, you don't know um, how to kind of improve things until you at least start. So this is my starting point. Um, let's see how I can improve by continuing to work and learning from my mistakes and keeping that growth mindset. And one more thing. Um, if you think I'm kind of kidding about like mistakes happening, I'm going to share a few of my like outtakes of just like, man, I don't know what was going on. So, um, you can see kind of like where learning takes place. Um, so this is an example of me learning just cause I'm an adult does not mean I know everything. Um, though, you know. I'm sure we already know, no one knows everything. All right, so 7C is uh, one of uh, the classes that are uh, putting forth in the class. So like I was saying last year, is at uh, Southview Public School? I mean, I mean, ah, Storrington, ah, yikes. So before I kind of get started here with the, uh, good, God. That number makes sense. I was like, well, yeah, no, you need to come back to that. 
So unit rates um, were something that we took a big, big look at. Man, you've been talking for three minutes? <laughs>